Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So with this video, I am going to continue my uh, Git uh, video series. And also with this video, we are going to finally start with some uh, practical examples. And uh, you will learn uh, how to use some uh, basic uh, Git commands. Also in this video, I am going to show you how to uh, download, uh, install and uh, configure your Git. How to put uh, a certain directory under a version control system. How to add uh, commit files and uh, check its uh, status as well. So uh, before we start exploring some uh, basic uh, git commands, uh, first uh, we need to make sure that uh, we already have uh, git uh, installed uh, on our system. Now uh, most of you have uh, already installed uh, git, but uh, nevertheless uh, for those of you who don't have uh, git uh, on their system, let me show you how you can install that. So just uh, go on Google and uh, type uh, download uh, git, and then just open this uh, first link. So the official website is uh, git uh, forward slash uh, scm dot com slash downloads here you just select your operating system and then you can choose for example 32-bit or a 64-bit version and from here just uh, click this link uh, download this file and uh, install that now uh, after you download and install git uh, on your system uh, you can also proceed and uh, check the configuration file now git uh, comes with a tool called uh, git config which uh, will allow you to get and set uh, configuration variables that control uh, all aspects of uh, how git uh, looks and uh, operates and uh, in order to access uh, that uh, git config tool uh, first uh, we need to access uh, our git so how can we do that well there are multiple ways so let me show you the first one the first one is just by opening a uh, command line. So just press uh, Windows key plus R and here you can type uh, CMD. And after you open that uh, CMD or command prompt, here you can type uh, git space double forward slash and then version. Press enter and if you receive here uh, some kind of uh, response uh, similar to this one, then that means that uh, you have successfully installed uh, git on your system. Because whenever you install this uh, git uh, tool on your system, then a new system environment uh, variable will automatically be added to your system so that you can access uh, git uh, through this uh, command prompt as well. Now a second way of accessing this git is uh, through a git bash. Now whenever you install that uh, git which I have just uh, shown you from that website, uh, then you will be able to access that uh, git bash just by pressing a right click on your desktop and uh, clicking this uh, git bash, okay? So there are two options here. The first one is uh, git uh, GUI, where you can just uh, use a uh, git version control by pressing some buttons, or the second way is by using a command line. And we are going to use this command line, of course. Okay, so it's basically the same as uh, the command line uh, from our uh, Windows operating system. We can just increase this uh, window a little bit. And we can also zoom in to see this uh, code uh, even better. Now to zoom in here, uh, you need to use uh, one shortcut. So just uh, hold down the control and use your mouse wheel. Okay, so there we go. Now we have successfully zoomed in here on our uh, git bash. Now the first uh, command uh, which uh, we are going to write here is uh, for checking a configuration file. So let's type here uh, git space uh, config space uh, double forward slash list. Now, after you type this command, uh, then you are going to see a uh, multiple configurations uh, which are available on your uh, git configuration file. Now, this is actually a global configuration file uh, which uh, will be applied to each and every repository on your system. However, there is also a uh, local configuration file which uh, can be applied only on a certain uh, projects or repositories of yours. So for example, if we set here a certain file under a version control, uh, then we are going to generate a new config file, which uh, will be available only on that uh, new project. So we can configure either a global git configuration or a local configuration. Now here you can also see uh, some information like for example the name and the email address. So uh, when you install and uh, check the actual configuration file, it's always a good idea to set the username and the email address of your choice. And this is important because uh, every git commit will use this information and uh, it will be located inside the all commits uh, you start creating. So now I'm going to show you how you can change those uh, config values using this uh, git config uh, tool, okay? So let's just uh, type here uh, git space config space. I'm going to write here uh, double uh, forward slash global, then a space 
user.name for example, then a space, and inside a double quotes, uh, I'm going to type here a new name, for example, the name of my YouTube channel, so like that, and now press enter. Now let's type here again this uh, git config list command, so we can list uh, all those config uh, values. And now you will see that uh, we have successfully changed uh, our name. So this name will now appear uh, on each and every commit we execute uh, here on our system. And if you want to clear your uh, screen, you can just type here a command named uh, clear, and then uh, all of that uh, will be deleted, okay? So uh, now that we have uh, finally installed and configured uh, Git on our system, uh, now we can finally start with some uh, basic commands. And uh, first, uh, I am going to show you how to obtain a Git repository. Now, there are two ways. So the first way, uh, you can basically take uh, any directory uh, on your operating system, which uh, is not uh, currently under a version control, and you can uh, turn it into a Git repository. And the second way of uh, obtaining a Git repository is uh, by uh, cloning another repository from a third-party services like uh, GitHub, uh, Bitbucket, and so on. So now, if you want to check uh, in which uh, directory you are currently in, you can type here a command named uh, ls. I'm going to just uh, now click uh, clear command, and then I'm going to type here uh, cd, so I can navigate uh, to my desktop. There you go, now I can click uh, ls command again to list uh, all files and folders inside a desktop, so I can see here uh, all the folders and files on my desktop, okay. And now I'm going to use uh, one uh, a Linux uh, command named uh, mkdir, which is a short for a make directory, and uh, we are going to create a new directory on our desktop. So now I'm going to type here a project, so the name of the directory will be project, click enter, and now let's press uh, ls again. And there we go. So now we can see that a new directory appeared named the project. And if you want to get inside that project, you can just type here cd and the name of that directory, so project. And now we are currently inside our project directory. If you enter here ls command, then you are going to see that there is no any file inside our project directory, okay? Let's just clear everything from here again. So now let's say that we want to create another file inside this directory. So we're going to use one uh, command named the touch, and then I'm going to name here that file, uh, file.txt. Press enter, and now let's uh, add this uh, ls command, and uh, you will see that now our project directory contains uh, one file, which is a file.txt. So now I can also type here one command to open up this uh, file, so say here uh, start space uh, file.txt and press enter, and now as you can see we have successfully opened that file. But, uh, as you can see, in that file we don't have anything. So if you want to add here a text uh, to that file with this command line, you can use uh, one uh, useful uh, command here named uh, echo. Then here let's type uh, some uh, random uh, text, then a space. Let's add those uh, two symbols and then the name of our file. So file.txt, press enter. Now let's uh, start our file again. And uh, there we go, so now we have successfully added here uh, and modified our file. Let's now clear all of that. And now that we have uh, one directory and uh, one file inside our death directory, now uh, I am going to show you how to actually uh, turn or uh, put this uh, same uh, project under a version control system. So to do that, you just need to use uh, one uh, simple command named uh, git init. Press enter. And with this command, we have basically put our project directory under a version control. So this command will also create a new uh, subdirectory named uh, .git, and that uh, .git file will actually contain uh, all your uh, necessary repository uh, files, which uh, represents a uh, git repository skeleton. So now we can just type here ls, and we are not going to see here anything. So let me just open here uh, that uh, directory from our desktop. And now you will see uh, one invisible file named uh, .git. So whenever you initialize a certain directory and uh, put that directory or that project under a version control, uh, then here this uh, new uh, directory or file uh, will be generated. So we can just open that up and we can check uh, some uh, useful information about uh, our repository. So here you can also see that there is uh, one config file available, which means that uh, we can modify this config file only for this uh, local repository. So now that we have successfully put this repository under a version control, 
and that we have created our uh, new file named the file.txt and now I'm going to show you also one uh, useful command named the git uh, status and with this command uh, we are going to be able to check the status of uh, all files inside our repository so here you will see that uh, it will say uh, untracked files file.txt so that means that uh, we still haven't uh, started tracking this file with our version control and uh, if you want to start uh, tracking this file uh, then you should add here one command named the git add and then the name of that file so file.txt now let's press enter let's now uh, clear that let's add here one command git uh, status again so even though we have uh, added that file we haven't still uh, committed that file to our version control so let's type here one command named the git commit. I'm going to use one option here, uh, m, so we can specify the message of this commit. And I can say just uh, file.txt added. Press enter. Okay, so there we go. And now let's check the status again. So here we can see our master branch and it will say nothing to commit, working tree clean. So it means that now we have successfully uh, added and committed all those files, in this case only one file, and now our file.txt is actually being tracked by our version control system. Okay, so now the last thing that I want to show you is how to obtain a Git repository in other ways. So other way of obtaining a Git repository is by cloning some third-party repository from a GitHub or a Bitbucket, for example. So now let me just open here a web browser. I'm going to open up one of my repositories. I'm going to copy its link. I'm going to get back here, I'm going to press or add a command here cd space uh, double dot so I can get back uh, to the previous uh, path which is a desktop and here on the desktop uh, I'm going to type here a uh, git clone and then I'm going to paste that uh, URL. So you can just uh, right click here and press uh, paste or you can use a shortcut uh, shift plus uh, insert. So there you go, now press enter. And now we have successfully cloned that repository from GitHub. And if I press here ls, uh, then we are going to be able to see a new project or a new directory named the Boruto app. And we can now of course uh, go into that uh, Boruto app. We can list uh, all its files. And uh, there we go. So now with this uh, one command, we were able to clone that repository on our local machine. Okay, so I hope that you have enjoyed uh, watching this video and that you have learned a lot as well. So uh, feel free to comment down below if you want to see more videos about uh, Git version control system. Like this video if you find it uh, helpful, of course. And uh, see you in the next one.